Hi, and welcome. Guys, it has been three years since I posted a YouTube video. Can you freaking believe that? So, let me update you on some things. Okay, so last time you saw me, it was 2020. You know what that means. COVID-19, we're all stuck at home. I had just not gotten to finish my first year with my class, so sad, and I was teaching first grade. So, uh, plot twist, um, it's now three years later. I am in year five of my teaching career. I just started teaching third grade this school year, and I'm loving it. It's hard, but it's a good hard. Um, and in 2022, I had a baby. Can you believe that? That's crazy. Yeah. So he is almost two years old. He'll be two in August. And yeah, those are some big life updates. But yeah, I'm going to try to be back. Um, being a busy teaching toddler mom is really hard. But I feel like this is something that I want to do for myself. And as a mom, I don't do a lot of things for myself. So let's get started. Today we're going to do a middle grade March uh, wrap up. And how fitting that it's middle grade March because I part participated in the first ever middle grade March many, many moons ago, seven years ago. And now I get to do it here today. So um, let me talk about the books that I read. And if you see me looking over here, it's because I have my laptop. Sorry if you see the glare from that. So I did a lot of audiobooks. Um, so that's why I don't have them physically or I've already returned them to the library. So the first book we'll talk about is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This was my first Sarah Adams book. I had heard about Sarah Adams because she is kind of like a closed door romance gal. Um, when in Rome, we have a girl named Ray Rose. She is our like pop star Taylor Swift character. And she is kind of tired of the life of a singer. Her manager like works her to the bone and like kind of has forgotten that she's a human being. And she wants to live out her Roman holiday dream, uh, as in the movie with Audrey Hepburn. And so she is in Tennessee and the closest place is Rome, Kentucky, because she's not that close to Rome, Italy. So she's about to go on this world tour and she just dips out of town and says, I just want the slow life. So she meets this very grumpy baker whose name is Noah <laughs> um, and Noah is kind of just tattered by his past he um, you know has gone through with some things relationship wise that have left him kind of not in the mood to date an out-of-towner but obviously it's a romance book so they fall in love <laughs> sorry if I spoiled it for you but um, I really liked it um, uh, it references the movie Roman Holiday, so if you're a big Audrey Hepburn fan, you will probably will really adore that. My uh, best friend is really into Audrey Hepburn, so I was kind of thinking of her throughout the story. Um, I rated it four stars, and um, there were a cup like it was very insta-love. Um, they kind of just like fell in love really quickly because they're... Um, the time that she has in the book in Rome is only like two weeks or something. So it's like pretty quick, but it's kind of like what you expect in this kind of romance book. And then, um, the other part that I really liked was his sisters. So she's actually written companion novels and the next one is Annie, but I really want to read the story of his sister Madison. She basically in the story is... Uh, teacher but she became a teacher because the oldest older sister wanted her to become a teacher not because she wanted to and she like wants to like um, explore the world and stuff so I felt like her storyline is really going to be really fun. I re-listened to The Mar Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemeinhart I think that's how you say it. Basically this is a story of Coyote 
Um, she is living on this bus with her dad and they live there because of an extenuating circumstance that happened five years ago. And she gets a call from her grandma one day that a park is being torn down and she decides that she needs to um, head back to her hometown, which in her dad's eyes is a no-go. So she's got to figure out a way to get back there. And we meet some very interesting characters along the way. And ah, I just love this book. Um, this, like I said, I re read it, but this time I listened to it. I loved the audiobook. Um, I'm not really a big audiobook gal. I'm trying to become one as a busy mom, but the narrator really sucked me in and it was really just such an enjoyable story and I just loved rereading it. I um, remembered bits and pieces about it, but it was um, a really good uh, refresher because I in April, I'm going to read the sequel, Coyote Lost and Found. So next one I have is by a favorite author, one of my favorite middle grade authors, Catherine Applegate. Uh, Catherine Applegate, she is just, the way that she can write an animal and make you just love them so much uh, is amazing. So one of my favorite books by her is The One and Only Ivan. I read it to my class this year. They really liked the story. And then, um, so this month I read Otter. So I've been wanting to read Otter. Otter is about an otter and he, she's otter, like weird. <laughs> um, and it's just like the cutest little cover. And it was about or this one otter named Otter who she's kind of, um, she kind of got injured early in her life and then has come back to the ocean but something happens with a shark and her friend um, and they end up back with the scientist and it's such a good little story. Catherine Applegate books are in favor, so they're real quick reads. This one left me wanting a little bit more, so it wasn't my favorite Catherine Applegate. I did tear up a little bit because she always makes me tear up um, and it was four stars, but just wanted it to be a little bit longer and it's based on a true story which I love the one and only Ivan is based on a true story as well so just I love Catherine Applegate she's the best okay next one we have is Maisie Chen's Last Chance by Lisa Yee fun fact I was looking up Lisa Yee because I wanted to see if she had any other books because I ended up really liking this one and she wrote some of the books in the American Girl like world. And if you know anything about me, it's this, that I loved American Girls when I was younger. My grandma spoiled me rotten. I have six of them. I was obsessed with American Girls. So the fact that I found out she wrote some of those, instant celebrity in my eyes. But Maisie Chen's Last Chance. So the reason I read this is because it was a middle grade March book club pick last year and I wanted to watch the live show to like see their opinions on it. So uh, this book is about Maisie Chen and she is uh, living with her mom in California. Her mom is like a food stylist that makes like the food look cool in commercials even though it's fake. And then she has her grandparents, Opa and Oma, who live in Last Chance, Minnesota. And through some events, her grandpa is sick and her and her mom have to come to Last Chance and um, take care of Opa as he's sick. And basically, um, they end up encountering some prejudice and her opa tells her the story of her great great grandfather, uh, Lucky Chen. Ah, uh, my goodness, this was such a sweet story. This is another one I listened to on audio. I really liked the audiobook narrator. My favorite parts were definitely the Lucky Chen parts. Um, I really didn't think that I was gonna like it, uh, but I re I really ended up loving it he encounters some prejudice. So you have the prejudice that Lucky Chen is dealing with, but then also the prejudice that Maisie and her family are dealing with in Last Chance Minnesota. Maisie's weaving of poker knowledge, so her grandpa's teaching her how to play poker, so I really loved that. Um, uh, she writes fortune cookies, 
and they're so sassy. They're so funny. Just super cute. And then uh, they also mention this uh, Food Network star character, Carlos. Um, his segments were really fun. It, it really was giving me um, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives vibes. And I love that show. So that was really a treat to listen to. And then the history of the Paper Sons. Okay, the next one was the group book, which was The Mona Lisa Vanishes. A legendary painter, a shocking heist, in the birth of a global celebrity, which I actually do have with me. So I love this cover, such a good cover. But I also figured out that the um, artist is the same author or the same artist from Chasing Vermeer, which is a book that was a Battle of the Books club pick if you're a Texas gal um, back when I was in school. So I remember I was like, why does this art style look so familiar? And that's why. I thought it was Brian Selznick, but it wasn't. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the story of how the Mona Lisa was stolen. And I had no idea that the Mona Lisa was even stolen. But apparently, the Mona Lisa was stolen. And that's why it is as infamous as it is today. Um, infamous, famous, what have you. I really liked the dry humor in this book. Lots of history. It really floats back and forth. Um... I didn't listen on audio, but I know a lot of people who listened on audio ended up getting confused because really you're jumping around all sorts of different timelines. In the book, it's split into sections. And so it didn't feel as like confusing, but like you'll have a different section and then you'll be talking about something else. And I know the audiobook would break it up like that too, but just the natural pausing points and just reminding yourself who all the characters are. And there are a lot of European names, so it's just a lot of people to keep up with. But I really, like, I was not not expecting to love this. I do love middle grade nonfiction. One of my favorite books from a couple years ago was Bomb, The Race to Steal, Kill, and Destroy, and Possible Weapon. It's by Steve Scheinkin. Don't know if I got the subheading right, but I know it's called Bomb. <laughs> Uh, but it was the story of how they built the atomic bomb that they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that was a wonderful nonfiction. And the reason I like middle grade nonfiction is because it's a narrative nonfiction. So I didn't know how much this was going to hit, but I really thought that it did. I thought it hit all the points. I thought it told the story in such a beautiful way. And I really liked the message of just because it might be um, not like a sensational story doesn't mean that it's not the truth and I know that the hosts were like really like hesitant about doing a non-fiction but I think they hit it out of the park because I feel like most people liked it okay the next one we have is the the insignificant events in the life of a cactus so I heard about this book from Krista from Books and Jams and also I think I heard Katie from Life Between Words talking about it on one of the live shows but this book is by Dusty Bowling, and it is about a girl who has no arms. Her name is Avon Green, and she was born with a uh, birth defect that she was born without arms. And she used to live in Kansas, and now she's having to move to Arizona, and her dad is going to manage stagecoach pass which is like this western theme park type thing so i uh really liked the story avon as a narrator that's another one i listened to on audio i feel like she was so funny she really she was adopted and her parents just made her do everything so anything that we would do with our hands she does with her feet so she eats with her feet she like can put on her clothes and she talks about how it takes a really long time to do certain things but she can do anything that she would like to do and then she befriends a boy named Connor who has Tourette's and another boy named Zion who's overweight and she really just um makes friends and learns how to be a middle schooler with no arms. And there's a mystery element too. They're trying to figure out the mystery of this necklace that they find in Stagecoach Pass. So there's all sorts of different fun things. I absolutely loved it. It was a, it was a great time. Then the next one I buddy read with Krista from Books and Jams was The Lightning Thief by 
Rick Riordan. I know I have never read the Percy Jackson series until now. So, um, me and Krista were both like, we had never seen the adaptations, never read the books. It was completely exactly like my experience with Harry Potter back in 2017. Percy Jackson, if you are not aware, like I wasn't, he is a half blood. So that means that he is half human, half demigod. Uh, and whenever I think demigod, I think of Moana, but anyway, um, <laughs> Basically, he is a 12-year-old kid, and he is troubled. He has ADHD and dyslexia, which God bless Rick Riordan for the on-page rep as a teacher. That is so wonderful. I can recommend this book to my friends who have ADHD and dyslexia, and they will feel included and like they relate. So I love that so much. But um, he is kind of troubled, keeps getting kicked out of school, and then these weird things have happened to him throughout his life. And in the first chapter, he vaporizes his pre-algebra teacher. So he quickly finds out he is a demigod and he has to go on a quest. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I can say. But he makes friends with the satyr and the daughter of Athena and they go on this quest together. And it was a wonderful reading experience. I it was my first buddy read my first like really successful buddy read um and we were just talking back and forth on boxer about it and we were both just like shook from every twist and every turn and it was just it was a delight truly um I had avoided it for a really long time because I am not that into Greek mythology um so the other thing is I don't know that much about Greek mythology so everything is kind of a shock to me or you know, I've heard of like Medusa and like I know about Zeus and I know about Hercules from the Disney movie and, you know, King Triton, who's basically Poseidon, you know. So I know all those things, but it was just interesting. And I feel like I really, uh, me and Krista were talking about how we really liked the character of Percy. He's so loyal, so clever. But I feel like Annabeth Grover and Percy all really work together well. So, yeah, I love that trio and I am excited to read the second book. The very last book that I read that I technically finished today on April 1st is Coup. Oh my gosh y'all. I placed this book on hold at my library probably three four years ago and I planned to read it for the first middle grade March because I heard somebody talking about it but look at this book. This is a chonker. This book is 400 something pages 407 and I finally conquered this book off my TBR but yeah Koo it is the story of this girl Koo who is dropped off by her mother presumably and she is saved by these pigeons and she grows up in a dove coat I think that's how you say it um and her favorite pigeon is named Burr and he is basically taking care of her and that's how she survived for this long with her uh dove flock that's the word I was looking for and basically he gets sick one day and they take him to the healer and the story kind of goes from there and this book was really sweet very cute but I think that it just went on too long. Um, I loved Koo and I loved Tully and I loved her friend Aggie that she makes. Um, I loved the whole story, but, but I just felt like it went on a little long. I feel like it could have been wrapped up about 100 pages sooner. Um, just a super cute story. So glad that I finally finished this book. And yeah, those were all the books I read. I think I ended up giving it a three, probably closer to a three and a half star. So the prompts that I did for middle grade March. So the one word title was Otter. Book you missed out on was The Lightning Thief. The group book was Mona Lisa Vanishes. Uh, immigrant Story was Maisie Chen's Last Chance. And the final prompt, debut. The debut book 
was cool. Pretty much every book I read this month was a winner. And yeah, if you're still here, thank you guys for sticking around. If you are still here from back when I started this booktube channel back in 2018, God bless you. I'm so sorry I've been so inconsistent. Life has just been so insane. But yeah, uh, thank you for joining me. Don't remember how I outro, but yeah, I hope you have a great day and read some really good books. Bye.